Father, we praise you for Jesus, Lord. We praise you that he is high and lifted up, Lord. We thank you that he didn't doubt the plan, Lord. We thank you, Father, that he didn't doubt that those words were spoken when he predicted his death and when he predicted his rising that those words were not for him those words were for us surrender everything we have to you Father let us lay it all down at the cross Lord Jesus thank you Father
continue to keep an attitude of worship. We're just going to love on Jesus this morning. Come on. Man, Jesus loved us. He lived the life of love. He lived the life of his Father. He came from heaven. He's the manna from heaven. He's the bread of life from heaven. He didn't bring nothing but life to this earth. What Adam lost in the garden, God restored through Christ Jesus. He gave us that bread. He gave us that manna. Jesus said, all those that will come, let them come. All those that are thirsty, let them come. Lord, we're here. We come to you today, Jesus. Father, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Lord Jesus, we know you had to leave us, but you didn't leave us comfortless. Lord, I remember. I remember my mom, Ma Jackson. She used to love to make the quilt, make those quiltings, those personal quiltings that we would just, they would cover us when we were, when we were cold at night. But Lord, you said you're not going to have to be cold no more when Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter just like me just like Jesus because Jesus when he promised I'll never leave you he meant it we thank you Jesus you meant what you said and we're going to press through I said we're going to press through to touch you we're going to press through to touch you because when we touch you we can touch others Lord when we touch you we can touch others with the gospel the good news and we thank you, Lord, when we come together, we're not gathering here to lift up Word of Faith Worship Center. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. And you have given us Word of Faith Worship Center to, to a place that we can come to gather. It's nice to stay at home. It's nice to stay at home and watch church online. But we're not a church online. We're a church on here. We're a church in, in here in this place. Lord, this is the place we come to gather, not on our TV set. Thank you for that, Lord. But you met us face to face. Lord, you met Moses face to face in the bush. Lord, we don't have to look to the bush no more. We look to Jesus. Hallelujah. That was a burning bush. Our God is a consuming fire. Lord, consume us today with your word. Consume us today with your presence. Consume us today with your goodness. Consume us today with your mercy. And we give you the praise for it. Can everybody say amen? I tell you what, I just keep my eyes closed and I just, I just have me a good old time up here this morning. Amen? Sometimes you just got to shut your eyes and worship God. And quit looking all around and look up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord in your giving this morning. There's a tithe. Our tithe and envelopes are there in front of you. If you need to make out a check, make it the Word of Faith Worship Center. If you want to give cash, give cash. You can give online. We're not going to pull that. Uh, I had the PowerPoint, but we took it down. You can go to work, wfwc.org. You can go to our website and click the button, donate, and you'll bring a PayPal account. If somebody's not here at this church and they want to give, they can't get to church and they want to give, tell them you can give to Word of Faith Worship Center. We're a church. We give God. We preach the gospel. But main thing is we want people to come to church. I know they started in the beginning. They started with home churches. They went, nothing wrong with home churches. But there's a place. Make sure you're in your place. Not just by yourself in your place. Because when God said it's not good to be alone, he meant it. Amen. It's not good to be alone serving God alone. That's why he gave us a body. <laughs> the body of Christ. He's the head and you we the body. And I tell you what, I got two arms. And, then there, and, and there's some people in the world, they don't have two arms or legs. But that still doesn't make them not a part of the body. But in the body of Christ, I've got, think about two arms. You got a whole body. Well, if, if one arm's missing, they don't come to church on Sunday morning. We, 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 we're called disabled. We're disabled. Somebody's missing something. Somebody's missing a handshake. Somebody's missing a hug. Amen. That's why we come to church. That's why we gather. Well, the devil don't like it when we come together. Tough. I ain't serving the devil. We serving God. See, he, he thinks he's a God, but he's not. To some people, he is. But one day, they're gonna, their eyes are going to be opened up, and I pray they open up now. Because the devil's a deceiver. He's not God. There's only one. His name's Jehovah. His son, Yahshua, Jesus. And there's only one way to talk to the Father. It's through Jesus. That's the only way. Amen. That's the, that is the good, that's the best way. 
Because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to my Father except through me. If you get mad at me, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just going to preach what Jesus said. Amen. I'm gonna, we're going to preach what Jesus said. I want to remind you again of John. That's John and Helen Jenkins. That's his lovely Helen, he calls her. That's my lovely Helen. But they're going to be with us uh, January the 29th. I know that's kind of might be a little distant, but I, I thought I made it pretty big. But anyway, they're going to be here January 29th at 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Ministering the word, ministering in song, ministering in music. So I invite somebody, amen. Be setting aside today what you'd like to give to their ministry. Because everything that comes in for our speakers goes to them. Come on, it goes directly to them. I've always did that. I'm sure my pastors always did. And, and then we do, we do above that. I do what God says, but anything donated specifically, you donate to them, it goes to them. Because that's God's gift that gets sent to us. Amen. And we bless them. I hear some preachers out there, and not me, but I've heard some preachers, they go somewhere and, and they don't get the offering. They get a handshake. I'm not going to mention names of churches. I don't know them specifically, but I know some ministers that said, hey, but God blessed them anyway. God still blessed those ministers. So I want to make sure I do. I'm, I'm obedient to what God says do. So as you get ready to give this morning, get, turn with your Bible to, to the book of John. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. Let me get there in my Bible. I'm in Psalms. I'm going to go there eventually. John chapter six. Now we got we got uh, we got some kids in here this morning. Some young kids. We, I could call them young lads. If I was back in Jesus's day, this is what we're talking about this morning. In your offering, it says John six one says after these things. I'll go back and read what Jesus was doing in chapter 5. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his sign. Say signs. There's a sign out there that says Word of Faith Worship Center. And if you've never been to Word of Faith Worship Center and somebody tells you it's on 750 Harris Street, look for the sign. And when you see the sign, you know you're there. They came to Jesus because they saw the signs. They followed him because of the signs. Signs are not for believers. Signs are for unbelievers. People have never been to Word of Faith Words and to look for the sign. But once you've been here and come join us, you don't go to looking for the sign. You go looking for the blessing, the people. Because <laughs> you know where the search is then. So you don't need the sign. The sign fulfilled its purpose. It got the people there. Come on, you see this? A great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And, and, and Jesus went up on the mountain and sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of Jews, was near. Jesus lifted up his eyes. And seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, bump Philip with the, <laughs> with the shoulder. Hey, Philip, uh, where are we going to buy bread? <laughs> Philip's seeing all these people coming too. Uh, McDonald's ain't open yet. McDonald's ain't even in the vicinity. Bo Jangles, I'm sorry, Bo ain't there. Bo don't know Jesus back in them days. They ain't nothing open. There's nothing to be found. <laughs> Jesus said, Philip, where are we going to buy bread to feed all these multitudes? Jesus said this, testing Philip. Now, I want to teach you something right here. You need to hear this. But, Pastor, the Bible says God will... He won't tempt man, neither test him. God will not test you with evil. But he will test you with his word. Because his word is right. His word is good. God will not tempt any man with evil. But he will test you to see if you believe him. <laughs> Jesus did this testing Philip. Philip answered, Lord, 200 dare denarii, that would be like $16,000 our time. Peter, Philip said, $16,000, Lord, wouldn't even, uh, would only be a, enough to give them a little bit. Andrew, one of uh, the other disciples, Peter's brother, I think a little bit of Peter's spirit was on his brother. <laughs> Amen. 
Peter said to him, uh, there's a lad, uh, let's see, JR's here. I see JR's here. Uh, Karma's here. Uh, Jeremiah's here. Jesus said, there's a lad here. Uh, he had some, he brought some lunch that was left over from Hallelujah night. Just the back, just, 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 just bringing this down to our level. Uh, the lad, lad's here. Darlene sent some lunch with him. Uh, he got two loaves, five loaves, and two small fish. But Philip, Philip said, but Lord, there ain't much among all these people, these hungry adults. Jesus said, uh, sit them down. When Jesus heard that, he said, sit them down. Jesus heard something. He heard, he heard he had something. Jesus said, I just need something. I just need something. I'm, I'm not going to go through all that. And then number, verse 11, after he had everybody sit down, Jesus took the loaves from the lad. I see J.R. holding that dollar up right now. But that's enough. All Jesus needs is your faith. Say, I'm going to give God something. I remember, I remember Brother Copeland said when he didn't have nothing to get, he was so dead, he looked down holding onto that bench pew and, get, and, and grabbed the pencil out of the, out of the pew and put it in the envelope and said, God, I'm going to give you something by faith. Gave him a pencil. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenneth Copeland ain't giving pencils no more. He's got a mega ministry blessing thousands, millions of people. But the main thing is he's giving them the word. Amen. And Jesus took those loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples, not to the multitudes. Discipleship is workmanship. God, that'll preach. That just came. Discipleship is workmanship. God's got something for you to do. And in the doing, you see the miracles take place in your hands. And every... and. Verse 12, and when they were filled, not they, Larry, Honeycutt, they didn't have just a little bit. They were filled, had their toothpick. <laughs> getting, you know, you're filled, you're sitting back, rubbing your belly, taking the, getting, getting the fish out your teeth. They were filled. And they gathered up the fragments that remained so that nothing was lost. And they gathered them up, verse 13, started with the little lad's lunch and had 12 baskets full. I'm not sure what a basket was, but I see these women in this church. If you go tell them to go to Walmart and get a basket, they're not coming back with a little old wee basket. Mama's coming back with a basket purse full because she found something on sale. Jesus found somebody with faith on that day, and John wrote it down in the book so we could read it on our day. See, it's giving. Sunday is, is, is a time to give corporately to God your best. That little lad that Jesus, he, he gave what he had. He was expecting to be filled that day. He had enough in his bag to be filled. Jesus sent him home. I ain't sure how much he sent him home with, but he went home with a smile on his face, saying, Mama, Look what Jesus did. Look what, look what Jesus did with my lunch. See, I, there was over 15, 20,000 people. That's a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. And those wonders will make you follow Jesus. That's a miracle. Man can't do that. Lord, did you, this might just be the message today. I'd be all right. We do, we, we're having children's ministry after tithes and offerings if we get there so this might be the children's ministry today but they look like they they're like they all right we need to talk about the kids during pre during 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 adult service amen because they are part of the service that's why we particularly do it here at this at our church we just have praise and worship together now if they want to go upstairs and lisa want to crank up the music up there and they, they start making some noise in the upper room we'll just listen as the lord leads lisa amen Verse 2 in, that, in this, there, there were many reasons people followed Jesus. Why are you following him? Later in this chapter, Peter told Jesus, where else can we go? Lord, you have the words of life. That's in John 6, 68. Because people were expecting things from Jesus. And he said, I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please the Father. Jesus said, I always do things that please the Father. So either you're going to follow me 
or you go follow somebody else. But God, Jesus said, I'm following the Father. And Peter said, Lord, we ain't got nowhere to go. We're following you. You got the words of eternal life. And this clearly states that one of the reasons the multitudes followed Jesus was because of the miracles of healing they saw him perform. I, I, don't, I don't perform miracles. I preach the gospel. Jesus does the miracles. When I preached his gospel, I said his gospel. Well, it's my gospel too, because I made it my gospel. That's good news. Miracles of healing act like a dinner bell that draws people to Word of Faith Worship Center or wherever Jesus is. Come on. I want to be where Jesus is because some churches don't let Jesus in. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, Jesus wants everybody to come in, but if you don't know him, he wants you to know, he wants you to know him before you leave. And if you leave coming in not knowing Jesus and leave knowing him, you will become a disciple. If you get born again, you will follow Jesus. Because Jesus, to be born again, you go from darkness to light. See, there's a lot of people saying they're following Jesus, but they don't even know him. They might be following a false Jesus, a bar Jesus. There's one of them, I'm not talking about a bar, but there's somebody, called, there was a man called Bar Jesus, and he didn't know Jesus. We ain't reading, but we ain't, we ain't going to go there today. Verse 5, Jesus wasn't at, at a loss about what to do. Jesus, what, Jesus was not in fear of lack. We're going to get into that a little bit later. In knowing what to do with all these people, he was trying to make disciples out of these duh disciples. You know, sometimes that's why we call duh disciples. Duh, what are we going to do? Duh, Jesus? <laughs> Ask Jesus. He'll tell you. He wanted them to listen to the Holy Ghost and take a step of faith. Sadly, they pulled their wallets out and looked at their resources instead of God's resources. Come on. Wayne, is your car full? If you got gas in your car, if you got a full tank, half a tank, well, I'm gonna, you're going to have a full tank when we leave. You're going to follow me to the gas store because the Lord just said fill your tank up today. I forgot to say that, but the Lord just reminded me. I meant to say to ask you when you got here. See, because the Lord wants you riding on full, not on even three quarters of a tank. That's blessing. When you come to church, that's, that's a blessing. Hey, I went to church today with three quarters of a tank. When I left, I had a full tank. How'd that happen? Pastor filled it up. I'm not filling it up out of the church's card. I'm going to fill it up out of my card. Come on. Now, I do fill, some, fill people's cards up as the Lord leads out of this church. If God says so, Amen. And you get blessed when I do it. Because, see, I'm the head. Jesus is the head. I'm the under shepherd and you the body. And when I take a shower, my body gets wet. Unless you keep your... I don't take a bath with clothes on. I ain't trying to be graphical here. But <laughs> my body gets wet. The head just don't get wet. Jesus is the head. We the body. He's blessed. You are to be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting blessed myself. How about you, Leo? Verse 9. Philip said, Lord, there's a lad here. He's got a, he got a few loaves and two fish. It ain't much, Lord. Change your confession. Little is much when you give it to Jesus. The Lord didn't take nothing and make something out of it. He took a boy's small lunch and fed the multitude. Man, I, I, we're going to meet that little boy or little girl one day in heaven. They're gonna be, he's going to be talking about, hey, did you read my story? Did you read my story? Come, come, mm. It's time for you to write your story. The Lord has to do, the Lord has to have something to work with. See, just don't give, don't give an offering. Give yourself. God's, God's not asking how much. He's asking a percentage. Not, not everything you have. He says 10%, but that, remember, tithes and offerings. As we offer him our limited abilities, he works miracles with them. Lisa. Therefore, when, we, when we're facing a need, 
we must take inventory of what assets we have. Verse 13. No, I need, I need to read 11 there for you too. When Jesus looked up, because it said lifting up his eyes, he looked up and gave thanks. Jesus was receiving sight. Jesus wasn't looking with the earthly eyes that he had from Adam. Come on. Jesus is the second Adam. He's the last Adam. He became flesh. He had fleshly eyes, but he had other eyes. He had the eyes of faith. Jesus is God, but he's not operating as God. He's operating as the Son of Man, anointed by the Holy Ghost. And by the gift of the Holy Ghost, Jesus looked up to his Father in heaven, where there is no lack. Amen. He looked up, Jesus lifting up his eyes, receiving sight. What he had in his hands was not enough. But Jesus, fear not, I am with thee. Jesus was not alone. See, Jesus said, it's not me that does the works. It's the Father in me. He does the works. So Jesus is looking up to his Father. And what happened was the spiritual, the food got blessed by the Father. And then Jesus took the blessing and gave it to the disciples. And the Father, multitude, he multiplied it. Jesus, what did he do? He just gave glory to the Father. The works I do, Jesus said, we'll do. If what? Give him our best. Give him our best. Let's stand. In the same way the Lord supplied more than the need required, he always gives abundance past your needs. Always asking you today is to believe him. Look up. Now, a lot of times when we pray, we look down. That's okay if you're looking down, know that you're looking. The spirit, your spirit is in within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Your heart, there's a physical pump, but also your heart is where your spirit is. Your heart, the center of your being is your heart. So when you, remember, when you look down and pray, you're looking into heaven, kingdom of God. But a lot of times pray, just start looking up when you pray. And people say, what are you doing? I'm lifting up my eyes where comes my help. Amen. Because sometimes, you know, we just form a fashion, pray, you bow your head. I think sometimes we need to just start looking up, with, even with our eyes open. I think Jesus had his eyes open and saw the Father like, like Stephen saw Jesus at the right hand when he was being stoned to death. He wasn't being stoned to death. He was being stoned to life. His body died, but he was looking up. He said, I see Jesus. And he's standing. You know what they did? The religious people gnashed their teeth and threw big old rocks at it and killed him. But, but Jesus received his spirit. Glory to God. Because he had this testimony. He believed God. Father, we thank you. We believe you today, Lord. And we're taking, Lord, a 10% is little compared to 90%. But when we give it to you, to the kingdom, oh, Lord, that turns it in. God, add a zero to your 10. What do you get? Come on, I just saw this. Not, not with my fit. If you add a zero to 10, what you got, Cindy? You got a hundredfold. That'll preach right there. Drop a, drop a zero, drop a O off. Good, what you got? God, you win. We win. Amen. Coming and going. Father, thank you for taking our 10% and bringing it back to 100%, a hundredfold. Amen. We thank you for it, Lord. And we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, bring your tithes and offerings this morning and just thank Jesus. Hallelujah and worship the Lord. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as precious joy. To give up, I'd be a fool. You were my all in all. Jesus, 
they go to the places they need to go, Lord, that they meet the needs that they need to meet, and that they cause all the um, desires of people's heart as it lines up with the will to be met, Lord. Whether that takes money or not, Lord Jesus, we know that people are giving of what, they, what they're able to, Lord, and even above and beyond that, Lord Jesus. And they do that because you do that. You give well above and beyond than we even deserve, Lord. So thank you, Jesus, for blessing this offering, Lord, and we thank you that you've uh, given us all life and happiness and contentment, Lord, and that you are causing us to bless you in every circumstance and to thank you in every circumstance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord said he will increase us more and more. He's a God of abundance. Everything. Don't get caught up in the world's way of doing things. This world, I'm going to preach myself, this world is not my home. Now I was born Margie Arlene Jackson is my mother's name. Arlene, that's one of them old names. She gave birth to me 56 years ago. I still call her mama. I, still, I really don't call her mother. I call her mama. But 24 years ago, I got born again. And I call daddy, Abba, father. Now, I have an earthly dad. He wasn't much a part of my life but I forgave him because he should have been. Their children should have a father and a mother that they can rely on, that they can come to, they can have confidence in, that they can identify in and, and, and know when they lay down that daddy's watching over the place. Mama's going to, not just so this happens, but mama's going to provide. She's going to cook for me. She's going to cook. I'm just saying the way mama did me. My, that's just in mama's. You're, you're your mama's baby. Now, Daddy, I, I was his son or daughter because, you know, you just, come on, son. He ain't looking, he said, come on. We're going hunting. Come on, son. Now, Daddy's looking ahead. He ain't looking back like Mama. Come on, come on. Come on. Mama making sure, get, your, get up here. Daddy's like, where are you at? He's already a mile down the road. <laughs> Does that make sense to some of you guys? Come on, son. Our theme for this year, if you've missed any messages, you can go to our website, wfwc.org. Click on the YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And anytime when our, when our new message comes up, if you got a phone, got a thing, it'll send you a notification. You got to do all these things and it'll remind you, pastor's preaching. Word of Faith Worship Center. One day, all this is going to be gone. Well, one day we're going to be gone. The church is going to be gone. God, Jesus is going to rapture. He's coming back for his church. And those that haven't put faith in Christ, haven't, haven't got their oil in their lamps, they're going to be left in darkness. I'm not saying they won't be born again, won't be saved. But they're going to, have, they're going to be facing another Christ. He's called the Antichrist. He's a deceiver. Well, I tell you what, I'm a believer. I believe in the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God. And it, he, there's going to be an angel one day going to blow a trumpet, going to say, come up hither, and I'm gone. I don't have to say yes, Jesus. I've already said yes to Jesus. So when the trumpet blows, my spiritual ears are going to hear the sound, and that's all I got to know. I'm gone. How you say that? Que sera, sera. Well, so it will be, will be. Amen. That means so be it. I'm gone. But until I leave, I'm going to preach as a preacher. If you're born again, you're a believer. You need to get people to believe on Jesus. Because he's the only way out of this mess. Come on. And he didn't start it. I just want to give an introduction. The title, what we're talking about. The theme going through the year is Psalms 23. And that should be easy for you to remember. 
Psalms 23 and 2023, if you can remember and write your check date right, you can remember to know the theme for your, for your, from your pastor is Psalms 23 in 2023. Fear not, for the Lord is with thee. I said he's with thee. Psalms 23, 4. Jesus is the door. That'll help you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you got a choice. Some people are walking through or in, in fear. They stay in the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Amen? I want to give you a little introduction. I haven't gave this yet, but an introduction to the message today. Comparing Moses and Jesus, contrasting the two. Moses was given the Ten Commandments for the nation of Israel on Mount Sinai. Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount for the spiritual people of God. See, Moses was a shadow of of the Christ that was to come. See, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. See, Moses was the lawgiver. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. See, that's what he was doing. He was was making another, another gospel. He was a prophet. Jesus was a prophet. Jesus is a prophet. But he also is God manifest in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, the children showed us. See, that, that just wasn't a program. That was the gospel. Them kids preached the gospel. My wife directed a gospel message. Amen. God has gifted with her to see the gifts that in children that God has gifted in these children and put them in place. Amen. Pharaoh... Con- Contrasting Moses and Jesus, Pharaoh was alarmed that the children of Israel would one day outnumber the Egyptians. This is, Pharaoh was in fear. He said, these people are getting bigger than our people. So you know what Pharaoh did, that Pharaoh back then? He said, when a, when a Hebrew woman gives birth, take the firstborn and drown it. Take the firstborn baby and drown it in the Nile. That's what, that's what Pharaoh commanded the, the, uh, the, woman, the women that would be the, I forget what, midwives. That's evil. Bring it down to our day. Do I need to talk about abortion? It's okay. It's okay to abort your baby, to kill your baby. No, it ain't. If you get pregnant, you need to raise that baby and give that baby life. Give that baby a choice. That baby's got a choice too. Be a doctor. Give the baby a choice to live. Period. Now, Now, don't expect sinners to believe what you believe, but preach to them. Don't be silent. Amen. Pharaoh was alarmed and told him to do that. He gave orders that all boy babies, now male babies, he kept the daughters, just kill the male babies. Born to the Hebrews, be drowned in the Nile. Jesus' day. King Herod, same devil, same evil. See, we're not to hate people, we're to hate the devil. He's evil. That's all he brings forth is to kill, steal, and destroy. Talking about the devil. King Herod issued, gave orders to kill all male babies in Bethlehem under two years of age. Hoping to kill the prophesied newborn king of Israel. Moses led the slaves out of Egypt. The Hebrew slaves. Giving them freedom and a new nation. Jesus delivered all humanity. All tongues, nations, and tribes, kindreds and time, tribes, the Bible says. All, et, how you said, ethnicity. All colors, all tribes. <laughs> Jesus did. Well, I, I believe we're supposed to follow his example. Amen. Jesus delivered all humanity from sin and death, giving us freedom and founding the church, the body of Christ, a living See, that's why this church will never shut and lock its doors down again because we're a living entity. We give life here. We give give choice of life to come here and get healed, to get saved, to get delivered, to get delivered in your finances, to to get delivered out of darkness, depression, suicide thoughts. Come in here, you'll get free. Jesus will set you free. He'll set you free if if you'll choose to be free. Moses was, in the, Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years, working as a shepherd. 
before God called him back to Egypt to deliver his people. Jesus, the chief shepherd of our souls, fasted 40 days and 40 nights before beginning his ministry. He was a type and shadow. See, Jesus, Moses was the shadow. Jesus is the type. <laughs> Amen. He's the good type. I said, Jesus is good. God is good. All the, time. the gospel of John, we just read about a little bit of John, compares the manna God used to feed the Israelites to Jesus as the bread of life. John 6, 30 through 35. He is that bread. He is the word that came down from heaven. I got a little bit of revelation on that, but I'm still praying on it, Randy. I'll give it to you. Just a little bit, little nugget. Jesus was tempted in that, in that wilderness by the devil. Jesus was hungry. He fasted 40 days, hadn't ate a thing. The devil said, there's a rock, Jesus. You, you God, if you God, if you God, turn that rock. Make that, turn that rock into bread. God could have did it. God has the power to do it. But he doesn't have the power, he doesn't have the control to make Jesus do anything. See, we have a free will. But Jesus knew, it's not my will. It's, I came down here not to do my will, but to do the Father's will. And Jesus said, it is written. Jesus had read, it is written. Man shall not, see, Jesus is the son of man. And in that man's body, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that comes out of my Father's mouth. See, that bread, that manna that came down from heaven was what? Food. For the Israelites. But it didn't stay out there all day. It came up in the morning and it was gone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. See they had to live by that word. That faith every day. That God was going to be their provider every day. See you just didn't. He said don't gather it up. But on the, on, on the sixth day get your double. Fill it up. Because the seventh day God says it's time for you to rest. It's time for you to come to church and praise me. Worship me. Thank me. Because if you gathered up. It's going to turn into worms. And you know, there's some, you know what, there's some out there that just said, I, let's just see. I, you know, there's some that just don't believe. Come on, let's go out there on the, on the sixth day, on the Sabbath day. Let's go get us some. Just tempting God. See, that was evil. See, that was evil to say what God says is not true. That's evil. That'll get you in trouble. Amen? So see, that bread, that manna, Jesus is that bread. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. He's the word of God that we can't live without. There's some living without Jesus. They're not living. They're just existing. Come on, they're, not, they're just existing. I was one. It's a sinner. I was just existing. And one day that sinner man, if he doesn't call on Jesus as Lord and Savior of his life, he's going to exist somewhere. It's called hell. It's called outer darkness. It's called separation from God. That's called the second death. The first death is a physical death that every man will see unless we go by the rapture. We'll never see that one. I'm hanging in. I'm, 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 I'm exp I want to experience that, Lord. I want to experience that rapture where I just pass by. I don't have to go by the grave. I go by the, whoo, the trumpet. <laughs> Amen. I, I was sitting listening to a good message, uh, Dr., Dr. Frederick Price, back in his, man, he must have been 30 years old. Uh, Billy Joe Darty's church. Billy Joe, Billy Joe's in heaven. I was watching that. I was like, my God, these generals are in heaven. Fred Price is in heaven. He was looking there. Oral Roberts was on the front row. He's in heaven. Uh, I was like, my God. But you know what? I'm going to preach that gospel they were preaching. Faith. I got an assignment. Fred Price had an assignment. My assignment is to preach you faith. The word of faith. Preach faith to the world. Preach and teach faith to you. That's my assignment. Because the Bible says, faith pleases God. It's impossible to please God without faith. I got a good assignment. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. When you come to the Word of Faith Worship Center, you're going to hear something about faith. Amen. That's my assignment. And, and I, it, just, it just blessed me to hear, hear Fred preach. It just blessed me. Because he went right to my scriptures, Romans 10, 8 through 10. Word of faith. You know what the word of faith is? You're going to know today when you, the word of faith is the word of God. How does faith come? 
Hearing what? The word of what? So what is faith? It's the word of God. It's what we preach. The word of God. Amen? You can't separate one from the other. When you preach faith, you're preaching God. And when you preach God, faith comes by hearing about God. Now, if all there's, how many names does God have? Help me. Ten, nine? There's, he's got a lot. He don't just have one. Now, there's one God, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Shalom, our God of peace, Nisi, Jehovah Nisi. So we'll just have to get into the names of God. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Wayne can sing you a song about that. All that is in his name, Jesus. Amen. So you need to know those different names. I need to preach on them, teach on them. So what? You'll have faith for healing. So you'll have faith for peace. So you'll have faith for abundance. I I just saw that 10%. God wants to bring it back 100 to you. Just add a zero. When you see 10, when you give 10, Randy, see 100. That'll make your giving a lot easier. Tell me, what's better, 10 or 100? Give that 10. <laughs> that, that'll help you. I didn't hear that when I was in ministry. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a revelation. That was revelation to me. Well, that just sounds stupid. But that was revealed to me this morning by the Holy Ghost. It's mine now. I got it. I'm going to preach it. You're going to hear that now. But you've got to believe it. If you're going to receive it, you've got to believe it. And in your believing, I'll see you do it. Now, I don't look at your personal finances in this church, but God does. Come on. But he's not looking to judge you. He's looking to love you. He's not looking to judge you. He's looking to love you. And if you give him 10 cents, he'll give you 100 of that. I seen my first $1,000 gift come in twice this past year. But that was because I've gave, me and my wife have personally gave $1,000 at one time to the kingdom. I've seen it multiplied back. And I would have never thought it would have came by certain individuals. You don't need to know their names. So see, make God your source. And he'll use all kinds of resources. Amen? And I just thank you for it. So now I've got, got, got to stretch my faith. You know, sometimes I have to stretch my socks that I get bought. I ain't, I'm not complaining, Sherry, because I don't do the wash. I'm not, I don't do the folding. I'm not complaining. But sometimes the socks in my drawer ain't my socks. And I can tell you by the time I put them on my feet, because I like to have my feet covered. Ooh, Reed would like to preach this message, wouldn't he? <laughs> Come on, Tammy. We, he going to have to buy this message, ain't he? We have to send it to him. But sometimes that sock don't cover my foot. And I take it to Rowan's room or somebody. It's not mine. And you know those little socks that women wear? Those little, I could take it and just shoot it like a rubber band. It's, it's so tiny. You better put it in a bag if you put it in the washing machine because it might disappear. The washing machine will eat those things. They're so tiny they get through the basket. Put it in a bag. I'm giving you some revelation from an appliance technician. Where am I going with this? I don't know. But you you laughing. That means you're getting healed. Because the Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. Now, would you rather take the doctor's medicine or God's medicine? medicine. You just you just took a double dose. Hallelujah! (laughs) Praise God. Mm. And I thought I was being funny in my life just because to make somebody laugh, but now I'm getting people healed. I'm going to see people get healed because it's okay to laugh in church, to raise your hand in church. To do a little dance in church. You don't have to be a little dance. Get up and help yourself. We got somebody that can play some music now. It won't be so, it won't be so silent. Somebody starts stomping. And we, I'm going to say, Wayne, get up here and play the piano. <laughs> Y'all know me. I don't like a quiet church. Neither does God. Ask King David. Ask his wife. Well, I can't remember her name right now, but she was despised when she saw him dancing his ephrod. The Lord was so despising her, he shut up her womb. She, he didn't give, she didn't give the king no seed. Now, I'm not the judge, but God judged that. He didn't like that. He likes people. He, God inhabits the praises of his people. If, you, if you're unable to give children and come to church and start get out there and dance and praise God, God can open up a womb. That's the blessing. That's what God wants you to do is be blessed and bear fruit. 
after your kind. Oh, hallelujah. We, we, I don't, we might not even get past the introduction today. I got all year. I got to the rapture to preach this message. I got to say, I, I'm the pastor. I, just, I can just go with the flow. Amen. You know, the, the devil, a lot of times, and I, I'm, I'm getting, I just want to let you know I made a decision last night. Forgive, forgive your parish. I made a decision. I'm going forward with God. I'm just going forward. I'm, I'm, we're, going for, we're, going, we're going forward. We're going to see some great things in the city of Concord. Amen. Fred Price, he just, he just shook some, he helped me shake some things off. Now, he's in heaven now, but he preached that message like he, he, he preached that message because heaven was in him. Amen. Amen. I've never met the man person, never been to any of his meetings, but I, that, they're there. All you got to do is go on YouTube and do Dr. Frederick K. Price. Man, his son's preaching the gospel. His wife might still be living. But I can tell you, he's not just laying around in heaven doing nothing. He's up there preaching that gospel, teaching. <laughs> the gospel of John, I, I, a comparison of Moses with Christ Everything I just shared with you. A comparison of Moses with Christ is an important emphasis of the New Testament book of Hebrews. Book of faith. And the New Testament book of Galatians contrasts the old law with the new relationship we have in God through Christ. Galatians is written for the church, for the Christians. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Ain't that awesome? And the law is holy, but it's been fulfilled in two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. See, if you love God and God loves you, you'll love your neighbor. And you'll fulfill all the other commandments that Moses was trying to get the children of Israel to do. In observing, if you'll do this, God will do that. Well, we don't have to get God to do it anymore because Jesus did it. All I got to do is believe it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And in my believing... I do it. Don't be a hearer of the word and go out here and deceive yourself like a man looks into a mirror and forgets what you look like. If you believe the word and conceive the word, go out there and do it. And it's in the doing that you receive it. It's in the doing it that the miracle happens. When you let, go out here and lay hands on somebody that's sick, you, know, you ask them, can I pray for you? And you lay hands on the sick and get healed. That's a manifestation of God in you, working through you. That's a sign and a wonder to the they might be a believer, but they ain't never seen that. They ain't never heard nobody lay hands on me. I always go to church, they tell me to, they don't tell me nothing. <laughs> a lot of times that's what you get in church sometimes, you just get nothing. If it wasn't from, if it wasn't fresh manna, I don't want, I'll make me a ham and cheese sandwich. I want fresh bread. I don't want no moldy bread. Come on. Faith cometh by Faith don't come if by having heard. Come on, I want some fresh word. Amen. See, a lot of people say, well, you preaching out of, you preaching Psalms 23? I heard that in Sunday school. Faith cometh by hearing. It's time to hear it again. You, you, want, you want to get healed? It's time to hear it. See, faith comes by hearing. Maybe back in Sunday school, you didn't have a revelation of what, it, you, you, know, you see what I'm saying? I got a revelation this morning about the tithe, about the tenth. I'm getting a hundred. Amen. Amen. Get me a hundred. There's a thousandfold return in the Bible. I got to get the scripture before I teach you about it, but go ahead and add another zero. Add a zero to the hundred. What you got, Cindy? A thousand. It's not, it's not hard for God. We, wait, we make it hard because we, get, we got to look at it. We know what the banker says. We know what, we know what the zero means. What does, God, what does it mean with God? It means more. <laughs> more for him to bless you with. Pastor Scott out of Hope Church in Matthews, they call it, oh, I want, they believe, you can believe, believe for teaspoon, teaspoon full faith or uh, dump truck load faith. Measure. You got your teaspoon measure and then you got dump truck measure. That's hundredfold. Amen. See, just, God just uses him to say it a little bit different. But you see the difference between a, a tablespoon and a dump truck full. Now, there's different sizes of dump trucks. I've seen them caterpillars where a man looks like the size of a tire compared to that dump truck. 
That's, that's the way I see God. When I, when I think about giving, there's a, there's a truck. It's huge, Tammy. Moves mountains. Come on. That dump truck, they, put, they move mountains with it. I, I can preach on that. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'll speak to that mountain. See, it ain't the size of the seed. It's the size of your God. Have faith in who made the mountains. Can he move them? Oh, yes, he can. It's called earthquakes. <laughs> I like how there's a preacher called Mark Hankins. Anybody know Mark Hankins? You are listening to him. He said, if you could see what's on the other side of your mountain, you'd move it. You need you a promise from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Fear not, for the Lord is with thee. I said he's with us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We talked about Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. That's called a relationship. He's my shepherd. It's not, he's not the shepherd. He's my shepherd. You've got to make him personal. You've got to come to Jesus and know that he's your shepherd. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, and he's the good shepherd. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not. But for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am come that you might have life, Zoe, and have it till it overflows. So those who are truly born of God have power, have the power of God to enable us to win in life. Be winners, not whiners. See, if you're whining, you haven't believed. Amen? I know in whom I have believed, said the Apostle Paul. He went from believing to knowing. And he was fully persuaded. Abraham was fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able to do it. Fully persuaded. Why? Sarah laughed. <laughs> Sarah laughed. And God turned her laughter into joy. I tell you what, when a mama hears that baby cry, she's been carrying that baby for nine, eight months, nine months, she hears the baby cry, mama got joy. The baby's alive, the baby's breathing, the baby's crying, the baby's living. Amen? And that's, that's joy. The angels rejoice when one sinner gets born again. Amen? Lead one person. That salvation ain't just, just don't base it on getting born again. When you get somebody believing and get them healed, they get healed of a sickness. Hey, heaven's rejoicing. That's a part of salvation, being delivered, being healed. Now, the main thing is get, get born again. Go to heaven because who, be who wants to be the healthiest runner that goes to hell and lives separated from God in torment and flames? Don't do that. Amen? But enjoy the goodness of God. My father says he has laid up for me a crown. One day I'm going to wear it. I might as well just go ahead and see myself wearing it now because God doesn't take nothing back that he gives. Amen? If you give him, if you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Ghost seals you to the day of redemption. Your spirit is sealed. Your body and your mind's got to be renewed. Your body's got to walk in. I love what Fred Price said. And we're going to hear it preached at this church. And I'll just give you a question because y'all give me the answer. Would you rather be healed? Or would you rather, is it better to be healed or to walk in health? Walk in health. That's our goal. That should be your goal setter. That's where you set your hope. By his stripes, you were. Therefore, say not, I'm sick. See, I'm not dealing with your am sick when I'm preaching to you. I'm dealing with your are healed. You, you follow Jesse the planet, you'll hear him say that a lot. That's revelation to him. When people say, I'm, I'm, I'm sick, Jesse, Jesse will give them. I'm not dealing with your sick. I'm dealing with, I want you to know you're healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Present tense. And if you get your mind, your spirit knows that. If you're born again, your born again spirit, it's on the inside of your spirit, but your mind doesn't understand it. When the, the Bible says, when you plant the seed in the ground, that's by faith. And I leave it. I go to sleep. I go into bed and go to sleep. Why? God, the ground's working on the seed. 
When you believe God, put his seed in your heart, in your faith, give him your faith, and go to bed. Praising him and thanking you that you don't have to understand it. You just trust God. This is, I'm not going to make this hard. I'm going to make it simple to you. I'm preaching it. i got to live it. That's why I said I, I'm, 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 I stopped. I'm going to rest. Come on, we got to rest in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Rest in them. The best for you is to rest. Getting God's best, we got to rest in His promises. But we, I got to give you faith. I got to preach these promises so you'll have faith. Preach the word so you'll have faith to receive it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to preach faith this year. Glory to God. I got to give Lisa a little bit more time up there. If y'all need to stand up and stretch, one little cheek up here is getting a little numb. Just get up and stretch it. Wake it up. Do what you got to do. I've been by myself all week. I'm going to preach to somebody. I've been preaching to that dog for four days now. God said, preach this, preach this gospel to every creature. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm looking at some creatures with a new feature. Because if you get born again, the Bible says you are a new creature with a new feature. God's feature. I said His feature. And there ain't no... There's no sickness in God. There's no lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You've got to see Him that way. Amen. He gives you rest. Acts 2, 38, 39. We still on the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. Peter said to him, said to them, after he preached this gospel, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift, say gift, of the Holy Ghost. He didn't say gifts. He said the gift. In the gift lies all the gifts. Speaking in tongues, prophesying, gifts of healing, working of miracles. That is by the Holy Ghost as He wills. So if somebody's sick, Willing to be healed, the Holy Ghost will heal them if you'll preach it to them. And all you got to do is say, take it. What's that? One drop of milk makes the medicine go down. Medicine go down. Y'all remember that old rhyme? It, it was a Disney thing. One makes the medicine go down. God is good. He's sweet. Take his word. One drop of medicine makes the... One drop of sugar makes the medicine go down. Sing it the way you got to sing it, but open your mouth and let His Word come in. Gary Price used to minister to this church. He said, if I, could just, if I could just take your head and pull it back and just throw this Word in you and put your head back on. That he, was, he was getting a revelation of, how, Lord, how do, I, how do I get the people to receive it? I can't get you to receive it. I just got to preach it. And it's the preaching of faith that miracles happen. Amen. Miracles. <laughs> That's what Peter says. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. And this is Peter speaking to them. His time, his day, to your children. That's, they, might, they might have been pregnant. They hadn't even been born yet. And to all that are afar off. That's me. I was afar off. Amen. Amen even as the Lord our God shall call. As far as I know, the role up there is still being called. I mean, God is calling all ye sinners, come home, come home, come home. All ye sinners, come home. Amen. That's the call. Come home. Man, come home. In my Father's house are many mansions. That's my home. That's my goal. Well, guess what? I don't need faith for that anymore. I sealed that deal with Jesus. Come on. I, Jesus has purchased my redemption. It's done. He's not coming back to the cross. I have seen that. So now I've got to take my faith and use it on something else that I need you to understand, that I need to understand. Amen? Amen? Now, if you're wondering if you're saved, come up here and get born again. <laughs> because I know in whom I have believed. And you can, once you've settled that, 
I don't care what the devil says. He's a liar. See, once you understand the devil's a liar, his, his, his game's over. That's the only card he has. And once you understand that, oh, thank you, Jesus. This is something else that was spoken on New Year's Eve here. This is going to be a year. Now, you've got, you got, you got to receive this. This is going to be a year of visitations. You want Jesus to come visit you? Now, I'm not... Visitations. Now, I've already got born again, but Jesus, you can come to my house anytime and explain some things to me. Do you know it all? Thank God, because I don't either. <laughs> Amen. We're on the same team. But Jesus knows it all. Has anybody ever played chess? How many? If you play, I played back in middle school. I, I, wouldn't take, I wouldn't challenge anybody right now to take on anybody because I haven't played in a long time. But I'll tell you this, the Lord reminded me New Year's Eve that we're going to be three moves ahead of the devil. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible says the Holy Ghost will show you things to come. See, the devil can't show you something to come. He's not God. He's not omnipresent. The devil is not omnipresent. God is. The Holy Ghost is. And he, in chess, when somebody makes a move, I, if I, I'm thinking three other moves to make to try to get that person in checkmate. And back then, you just had automatic moves. If somebody moves that, I, I know I'm going to move this. If we know Jesus, we can be three moves ahead of the devil. Hey, come on. Anybody, anybody watch the stock market? Got your 401K investing? Now, I, I don't keep a big eye on my, but I'll just tell you this. About three months ago, I checked it, and it lost about $9,000. You know what I said? Devil, you a liar. Get off of my 401K in Jesus' name. Double for my trouble, devil. $18,000. Get back into my account in Jesus' name. I checked it yesterday. It was plus 9000 My God watches over my words to perform them. Now, I didn't just jump up and holler. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know what I'll do? I'm going to watch it more often. <laughs> Amen. The devil don't want you to watch it. He's a thief. He wants you to do, do something else so he can come steal. Well, I'm going to tell the angel, you know, tell my, I'm supposed to be increasing. So when I see decrease, that ain't God. I don't, but there's other people, when I say play the start, I don't want to say play the start market. God wants you to be a good steward of what you have because everything I have is from God. It's his. So it's okay to invest in the stock market. God will give, God's going to, that's, that's a visitation right there. If you, if you feel like you need to invest something, he's going to show you what to invest in. That's called a visitation. If that's a desire, ask God, Lord, I want to make a right decision this year, and he will visit you. Now, it don't have to be a drink. He will visit you according to your faith. It might be in your mind. It might, you just have a knowing in your spirit. <laughs> Lord, bring back to me what? You showed me something this morning, but if it comes, it comes. If not, it'll be for another time. But just how God speaks. The cedar post. <laughs> That's one of them. He, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne was wrestling with a cedar post at his house yesterday. I lost. He, he, he lost. <laughs> he lost, but uh, round two is coming up. But he shot me a little video because, you know, he, once he gets done with this cedar post, he can go work on the songs for Sunday. But this cedar post is down in the ground, and he had a solution for it, but his wife has another solution. You know, just cut it off right here and fill it up. Throw some whatever you need to in there to kill the root. Be done with it. But that wasn't her. God's going to give her give her a better vision. Because we don't need to be in die vision. We need to have the same vision. Get rid of the post and go, up, go to bed at night and not worry about it. Because the ground is there to de decompose the post. You don't have to use termites. That's what the soil is for. Amen? Termites occur. In the name of Jesus, no more will mice be in this house in Jesus' name. We command the mice that's been, these little rodents that's been eating on our food, chibbling on the, in Jesus' name, we take authority over you now. Yeah, we got traps, but you know what? We got the Word of God. That, that, that is a, that's a, that's called something in the Bible, it's called a pestilence. It's called a pest. So, Lord, we, 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 we claim it right now by faith. We command these pestilence right now, these mice, to get out of this house, get out of this building in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we're not cursing them to die. If they need to die, fine. You know, they can go out here and they can be food for a cat. Lord, they can just suffer for Jesus the way. However, Lord, we just command them to get out of our house in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Colette says double, double, amen. She's the one that sees these little creatures. She hasn't seen one. She don't need to see them. She can see it by faith that they're gone. Amen. We're just, we're just dogmatic enough to believe that. That would be called a sign and a wonder. Why? Because I, I don't want Colette to see one trapped in one of those little traps. She don't care to see it. Neither does God. Because that's not a desire of Colette's heart. Amen. So let's just put the word to work. Give faith something to do. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. I ain't going to see no mouse because they ain't going to be in my house. That just sounds good. Hallelujah. That just went right along. Going back to the cedar post, and I'll, I'll let you go after this. Sorry, Wayne. We had to work your mom in that too. <clears throat> no, we're not sorry. We just, the old devil, he just, tried to, he just tried to work on us. So Wayne's dealing with this cedar post and sent me a video, and he's just wiggling this thing round and round, round and round. That post is hanging on for dear life. It's about two foot down in the ground. But there's roots taking hold of that thing. This is old cedar post. had a mailbox on it. Birdhouse. had an old birdhouse on it. I had a wisdom tooth pulled about, three, four, about four weeks ago because there was getting some decay in it. And Doc said it'd be, it'd be better that we pull it than try to invest and do a crown, and he, he made the right choice when he started pulling on. My gosh. I prayed in the Holy Ghost. He numbed it. He's pulling. He's my. I'm feeling pressure. Not pain, but pressure. I felt the pain for two weeks. <laughs> you know, the healing. You know, there's pain sometimes involved with healing. My gosh, he pulled. And he finally got it. He said, my, I ain't never seen one like this. I wanted, he was supposed to save that. So I wanted to see the tooth, but he never did. He said, this thing got three roots in it. The thing was holding on. Why? Wow, God gave me a tooth to hang on. See, I destroyed it because when I was a kid, I ate a lot of candy, but I didn't brush my teeth because I didn't do what Mama said. Got to get that sugar off. <laughs> that wasn't God's fault. That was my stupidity. And it cost me. <laughs> it cost me 54 years later at the hand of the dentist who saved me by getting rid of that tooth. But it hurt. That post is hanging on. It's got a root down there. The Bible says if we be rooted and grounded in the love of God. See where that just preached right in the message. I told, I told Wayne, I said, that, that root's just hanging on to that post. Like the word of God planted in our heart hangs on to the promises of God. Be rooted and grounded. See that root, once that, once that seed starts germinating and those roots get down and that little twig pops up out of the ground, you in trouble. If you don't get on that thing before, before long, it's going, it's going to, those roots are going down. See, you think you're just seeing the beginning. No, you're, seeing, you're not seeing the roots. See, the Word of God being preached today, if you'll let it get in your heart, but don't let the devil come and steal it. How does he steal it? I go out here, well, you know, pastor said that, but I don't believe. You know, oh, I don't believe. Then you just, got, you just got to let that seed get dug up. You didn't let it get rooted. Get it, let that seed, let that Word get rooted. In other words, rooted means you, you go to bed and you think on it. Think of you meditate on that thing. Find it in your Bible. This is what Pastor was saying right here in John 6. You go home and study yourself to show yourself approved to God, not to the pastor. You please God, you'll please your pastor. Come on. I'm a pastor speaking that I've pleased pastors in my life. By what? Serving them. I'm not asking you to serve me. Serve God. In serving God, you'll serve the church. Do what He's called you to do. Amen. Leave this place and do what God's called you to do. Go preach this gospel I'll preach to you today in your own particular way. Amen. Preach it. God, the Holy Ghost will anoint you. He has anointed you to preach good news. People don't want to hear about their sin. They want to hear about Jesus. I didn't want to hear about all kind of things I was doing when I was, I was a sinner. I knew that. I needed help. I needed a shepherd. I needed deliverance. And when I heard somebody preach Jesus, my ears started, man, I need to hear that. It was my spirit man, my lost spirit man that was needing salvation. And it started drawing me. It started drawing me. See, that woman at the well, she knew she'd had 
five, six. They wasn't her husband. She knew she was sleeping around. Jesus knew it too. But what did he say? He talked to her about living water. He didn't talk to her about her cheating husband. <laughs> Come on. He talked to her about this living water. Man, that got her interested. Well, living water, I ain't never heard about that. And then he said, I am. She knew about the Messiah. But what did he do? He gave her a little bit of salt, got her thirsty. He said, go out there and give people some salt. Give them some good news that you've heard. Come on. Get some good news. See, I can't, I can't bring a horse and make him drink, but I can get him thirsty. I can give him a salt block and make him thirsty. He'll go to that water. He'll get, he'll get to drinking. Amen. Give people some good news, and they'll, and they'll start listening. I'll say this, and I'll close. As I was thinking about mom, I think about mom every time I see a cardinal, things that she, she likes. She said, she told me there at the end she had these little cardinals. She said, when I see those cardinals, I, see, I think about my nephew that's in heaven. She's thinking about heaven. So when I see cardinals, I think about mama. Well, she's in heaven. I'm not glorifying the cardinal. I'm just, remember God would say, put you up a, when, when they have a great victory, they'd say, put you up a monument, a pillar, put you some rocks here so you can remember the Lord your God. Well, when I see a cardinal, I remember mama. She liked those birds. So I say, I miss you, mama. Pray for me. Help me preach this gospel. See, Paul was telling Timothy the same thing. Timothy, what I've taught you, find faithful men and teach it to them, Timothy. Why? Paul knew his departure was getting close. And he was trying to get that spirit in Timothy that was in him. Because you know what? Paul can't preach the gospel down here no more because you don't have a body. You don't have an earth suit. Angels are going to preach the gospel in the end times. But we're going to have good times in the end times now because we ain't going to be here preaching in the end times. The angels are going to be doing that. The 12 tribes of Israel, those thousands of 12, those hundred, help me, 144,000, they're going to be preaching the gospel. So it's our time to preach the gospel, to preach the good news. Judy's, Judy's going to be preaching this good news. See, I heard her give her, said, I, I, the Lord's been preparing me, the Lord's been preparing me. You prepared, Judy. You know what? He's had you in the oven. He, you know, Jackie, you know, it's called up. Uh, Proofing. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it wrong. See, he's been proving you, Judy. Now somebody's going to, now somebody's going to what? Raising her up. So somebody can taste of her. Amen. Somebody's going to taste of that good news. See, there's nothing wrong in preparation time. Nothing wrong. Preparation time is never wasted time. Amen. That's good news. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you, ma'am? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a visitor, but you know what? This ain't her first time visiting Jesus. Tell me your name again. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this precious gift right now, Lord. Thank you for Diane, for her coming to your, your house today, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your promise. You're going to visit Diane, those, Lord. Lord, there's things that she, she's been asking to understand. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Father God, that when you ask, Jesus said, when you ask, you receive. So Lord, we just thank, I don't know what she's been asking, Lord, but you do. And Lord, we just thank you right now that you're going to visit her and you're going to show her things. That she's, she's going to be able to pray things out in her family, Lord. She's not going to see her children, 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 go through some dumb stuff that she went through and some things she's seen other people go through. She's going to help them. She's going to, you're going to help her pray it out, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. She's going she's gonna to be able to say no things three steps ahead of the old devil to help some of her children or grandchildren, Lord, to save them from distress, to save them from this evil, dark world. And we just thank you, Lord, right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that she's going to know that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Anybody need prayer this morning? Don't lift your hand. If you need prayer, come up here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Something been on your heart. Need to get, need get prayer for it. Personal prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the healer is here. Jesus is here. What you need, sister? I've got to have surgery on my foot Tuesday.
baby. <laughs> she ain't no widow. She had a child. See, my thinking, I got to bring it back down to the Word of God. But the Lord said, ask her what she wants. See, God just asked you what you want. You came for. She, the Lord, the Lord gave her a child, and then later the child got sick and died. And the Lord gave her the child, and when she heard the child died, she laid that child on her bed. She said to her husband, didn't tell him what was going on, said, uh, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to find the man of God. Because she knew the man of God gave that child, and he didn't give that child for that child to die. He gave that child to live. And, she, and when, the, when the prophet saw her coming far off, he said, uh, he sent his servant down there. So go ask the woman, how is everything? And when he got to her, he said, woman, how is everything? She said, all is well. Well, in the natural, it wasn't well. But she wasn't looking at the natural. She was looking to God. And when she got to the prophet, he said, woman, is everything at home with your husband okay? Is everything okay with, your, with you? Is everything okay with your son? She said, all is well. But the prophet knew by the spirit that he needed to go. But he got her confession of faith. You know what? Gail, you're saying, my foot's all is well. That's exactly what you're going to have, a well foot. How about two of them? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stretch forth your faith, church. Father, we just thank you right now. We're not working up faith. We're agreeing with faith. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. Right there it is. All is well. Just breathe it in. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. So just when's this surgery? Tuesday morning early. Tuesday morning early. So go to bed early Monday night and just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to bed. Thank you. Thank you that all is well. And when you go go for surgery, when you go in, and they, they're going to put you to sleep. They're going to put you to sleep. Yes. Just the last thing you say, say, thank you, Doc. All is well. And you know what? When you wake up, you know what everything's going to be? That's the third time. All is well. <laughs> All is well in Jesus' name. Amen. And I hear a testimony in 2023 from Gail. All is well. It even rhymes with her name. All is well for Gail. Because she said, all is well. See, you have what you say. You can have what you say. But a lot of people are saying what they have. Well, I got diabetes. I got high blood pressure. I got, I got, I got. They have them what they say. So what do you want? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want any good thing. That means I won't lack any good thing. So be like Abraham. Abraham was looking for a city. He never found it, but he's there. But it was in the seeking that he was blessed. Come on. Because God told him, everywhere you go, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And he had this picture of heaven. He had this picture of the great the Jerusalem, the great city. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. Well, he couldn't find it, Randy, because it wasn't here. I just got a revelation today. It's in heaven. My God, he couldn't find it here. But he kept looking. Keep digging, Wayne. <laughs> Don't give up on, you're not giving up on the promises of God, right? It is well. It will. Sing it. Sing it. Bless the Lord. Father, let me just speak a blessing over and we're going to just worship the Lord. If you had something you needed and you didn't feel like you didn't need to come down for it, don't give up on it. We all got, set your faith. Set your faith in 2023 to believe. Fear not, the Lord is with thee. And everything that he's called us to do this year, we're going to get it done. Everything you've called us to do, Lord, all is well. So I speak blessings over your people today, Lord. All is well in their finances. All is well in their body. We're speaking it by faith. We're not looking at our bodies. We're looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And our faith is alive. Our faith is active. And our faith is in the promises of God. And we thank you, Lord, that this year is going to be a year of victories because all is well. In Jesus' name, amen. Lead us, Wayne. When peace like a river
Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh unto thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the Internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or WOF. WC.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.